Hello. In this clip we discuss the fiscal multiplier. The fiscal multiplier is the idea that increasing the planned expenditure to be more precise, increasing the autonomous part of planned expenditures is going to result in a larger increase in the equilibrium GDP than the actual magnitude of the initial increase in the planned expenditures was. Remember that the autonomous part of planned expenditure was that part which did not depend on the GDP Y. So the planned expenditure was equal to C0 plus I plus G plus C hat times Y minus T. So this part here is just the autonomous part of the planned expenditures. No, the statement is that if you increase one of the autonomous parts of the planned expenditures, then you are going to get a k-fold change in the aggregate GDP where this k is larger than 1. Now you can see this graphically as well. So if you just start with the standard Keynesian cross, where you have a certain planned expenditure, and of course the 45 degrees line representing the equilibrium, then starting from this point, an increase in the intercept which is nothing else than the autonomous part of planned expenditures, would shift this PE upward. And then we would get a Y prime GDP. So the question is that if this increase was delta PE0, then is this increase here bigger than delta p is zero and as you can see that is exactly the case so this was a cornerstone of keynes's idea who in case of inadequate demand that is in case of a deflationary gap in the economy the government can make up for the missing aggregate demand and that's the reason why it's suggested to increase public spendings without an increase in taxes. Let us see how we can calculate the multiplier if we use algebra. So what we have is that in equilibrium y equals c0 plus c hat times y minus t plus i plus g. Now you can see that the y appears in both sides and that is something you don't really want. So because we want to express only y we should bring the c hat times y to the left hand side and then that means that we subtract c hat times y from both sides and that is going to give us here 1 minus c hat times y being equal to c0 plus i plus g minus c hat t over, uh, well not over yet uh, because no we want to uh, divide both sides by 1 minus c hat and now we will get that y equals c0 plus i plus g over 1 minus c hat minus c hat over 1 minus c hat times t. So what we find that if 
we just simply increase one of the planned expenditure categories. For example, I or G or the autonomous part of consumption, then the increase in Y will be 1 over 1 minus C hat fold. So this is our K. And in other words, this is our fiscal multiplier. Now you can see that the higher the marginal propensity to consume, which we will just call MPC or C hat, the larger the multiplier gets. So if you have here C hat being for example, half, then you would get a multiplier of 2. If, however, you increase this, and uh, for example, you say that C hat is 0 0.9, then K would be 1 over 0 0.1, that is 10. So, the more people consume of their additional income, the higher the fiscal multiplier is going to be. Because no I also allowed for the presence of taxes, we can also find a different multiplier here. This c hat over 1 minus c hat is what we call the tax multiplier. And this is going to show us that what happens to the aggregate income if you increase taxes by one unit. So in case of C being equal to, for example, 0.9, we would get that the tax multiplier is 0.9 over 0.1, that is 9. So that would then mean that if you increase taxes by one euro, then this is going to result in a 9 euros decrease of the aggregate income in the economy. Now we can also look at a bit more complex case. And in this case we will allow the total tax to depend on income. So in this more realistic scenario we will say that t is nothing else than tau times y, but tau is just simply the marginal tax rate. Or you can think of this as some kind of flat income, uh, flat rate income tax. So tau we know would then be between 0 and 1 somewhere. Uh, zero when there is no tax in the economy and one is a quite unrealistic case. So if we rewrite our equilibrium condition, then we get y equals c0 plus c hat times and here we have y minus tau y because the t will be replaced by tau times y plus i plus g. So again, we can just simply do the same exercise as before in trying to get all terms involving y to the left hand side. Now one immediate uh, transformation which would make our life easier would be to recognize that this is nothing else than c hat times 1 minus tau times y because this here is just 1 tau times y within the parenthesis. So then we have a form which is possibly much easier to work with and that would be then c plus i plus g which is the planned expenditures autonomous part plus c hat times 1 minus tau times y. No, all you have to do here is to subtract c hat times 1 minus tau times y from both sides, giving you 1 minus c hat 1 minus tau times y being equal to c0 plus i plus g, which is again autonomous planned expenditure. 
No, we are going to just divide both sides by this 1 minus c hat 1 minus tau, and then we get the multiplier in the case when we have an ad valorem tax, or you can see this as some kind of income tax in the economy, and this will be c0 plus i plus g divided by 1 minus c hat times 1 minus tau. And this here is again plan expenditure, uh, well, the autonomous part of planned expenditure. So what you see here is that if you increase the marginal tax rate, then the multiplier is going to get smaller and smaller. So in case of a ad valorem taxation, this is the fiscal multiplier. And of course, by making i dependent on y, or perhaps g dependent on y, you could make this fiscal multiplier more and more complex and more and more realistic. Nevertheless, I think that for this level, it is enough if you understand that how we can get the basic form of the fiscal multiplier, what is the tax multiplier, and if you introduce uh, ad valorem tax, what happens to the fiscal multiplier? And actually using this technique, whatever we assume about the planned expenditures and its relationship uh, to Y, you will be able to derive the correct fiscal multiplier. Of course, do not forget that this is a quite partial story, because this model reflects the ideas of Keynes. Of course, you could immediately come up with some critiques, because what this model does not take into account is the crowding out effect. So in this example, you see that by increasing G without increasing taxes is going to cause a larger increase in, so a disproportionately larger increase in total GDP. On the other hand, what this story doesn't include yet is that this higher spending, this budget uh, deficit is going to lead to a crowding out of private investment and that will in return reduce the planned expenditure. So if you want to understand this mechanism a bit better and from a more critical point of view, then basically what happens is the following, that we increase G so that we have a possible increase in aggregate demand. Now this will have two possible uh, re uh, consequences. The first is going to be that the planned expenditure will go up. On the other hand, investments are going to go down and the nominal interest rate, of course, will also go up. And this is something that we already discussed when uh, discussing the, the loanable funds market and that's where you had uh, investment demand and some savings and we knew that if G increased without a comparable increase in taxes then we had a leftward shift, the savings curve and this actually reduced investment by uh, a certain amount and also caused the interest rate to go up in the economy. So the result is going to be that because investments are also part of the planned expenditure, planned expenditure is going to fall. That means that basically whether we find a fiscal multiplier larger than one is going to depend on the relative size of these two effects. So would the increase in G increase planned expenditure more than the negative effect of the crowding out effect. And usually we can say that this is not always obvious. 
So in practice, the fiscal multiplier is very often around one, meaning basically that if you pump one euro more resources into public spendings, then it is going to result in one euro drop of the private investments. But there are situations when the fiscal expansion can be more efficient than a drop in investments. And this is the case of a depression. Because in a stagflation, in a, uh, uh, sorry, I reformulate, because in case of a deflationary gap, in a very special case, you are going to have a very low investment already. So in that case, it is possible that the fiscal expansion is going to increase the aggregate demand much more than in a normal situation.